The chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. DeSantis, for five minutes. Director Comey, uh, violent crime is up in this country, isn't it? Our UCR stats we just released show a rise in homicide and other violent crime. The, the violent crime, I think, was about 4 percent, but the homicides were up 10 percent. Is that correct? 10.8 right, percent. And that's a pretty startling, concerning increase. Do you agree? Yes, it is concerning. Now, I don't know if you have data in 2016, but is your sense that 2016 is going to look closer to 2015, or will it be um, – uh, is there any indication that the rate's going to go back down? No. We continue to see spikes – in some big cities in a way we can't quite make sense of, there's no doubt that's, that some 15 to 30 cities are continuing to experience a spike. Whether that will drive the whole number up, I don't know. Now, the FBI has now uh, assumed control of the uh, Dahir Ad Adan, um, the Minnesota stabbing uh, terrorist investigation. Is that confirmed that that was a terrorist attack at this point? We're still working on it. It, it does look like, at least in part, he was motivated by some sort of uh, inspiration from radical Islamic uh, groups. Which groups and how, we're not sure of yet. But he was um, uh, he was praising Allah, was asking at least one of the potential victims whether they were Muslim, and I know ISIS did take uh, responsibility for it, correct? They claim responsibility. That isn't uh, dispositive for us because they'll claim responsibility for any savagery they can get their name on. But we're going through his entire electronic record and history of, of, of all of his associations to try and understand that. Now, there was a report from the House Homeland Security last year that said that Minnesota was actually the number one source for ISIS fighters in the United States. Um, one, do you acknowledge that that, or do you agree that that's true? Um, and if so, why is Minnesota churning out so many jihadists? I don't know for sure whether that's true, but it sounds about right. We, we have very few ISIL fighters from the United States, uh, even over the last two years. There have been a number of Somali-American heritage young men who've gone uh, to fight with al-Shabaab in Somalia and, and with ISIL. I suspect the reason is that's one of the few areas in the United States where we have a large concentration uh, susceptible to that recruiting. The great thing about America is everybody's kind of dispersed. That's one of the areas where there's an immigrant uh, Muslim community that seems to be susceptible for some reason. In, in small measure, again, we're talking about eight people, I think the number is. Uh, but that, that's my reaction to that. Well, what's the FBI doing to deal with, with the problem? You have an insular community that, that, that may make this uh, problem um, uh, more, uh, uh, more significant. So how is the FBI combating that? Oh, in a bunch of different ways, oh, with lots of partners, to make sure we know the folks in, in the, especially the Somali-American community in Minneapolis. The U.S. attorney there has done a great job. Have they been helpful with the FBI? Very. Very, because they don't want their sons or daughters involved in this uh, craziness any more than anybody else does. Now, with, with Paul Combet, I'm just trying to uh, figure out what happened here. He, he never said that he remembered anything from that March 25th phone conversation with the Clinton people. Of course, that was days before he bleach bitted the emails. He never said he had any factual knowledge of anything that happened on that call. Is that his basic statement? If I read the 302s, he didn't really provide any information. I can't remember for sure being be in the 302. You've probably seen it more recently. Well, than I, I saw one 302 said that he pled the fifth. Obviously, he was given immunity. Another said that there was an invocation of attorney-client privilege at one time in one of the other summaries. So I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what happened with, with, with Combetta. Why was he not able to pr provide information? He had immunity. This was something that was much more fresh in his mind than um, previous conversations with Clinton people would have been. Um, and yet you said he was credible. To me, feigning ignorance, uh, that is not credible given the timeline where you have the ta New York Times saying that this server existed. The House immediately sends a subpoena. He has this conversation. And then lo and behold, a few days later, all the emails are bleach bedded. Oh, he told us that with immunity that no one directed him to do it, instructed him to do it. We developed no evidence to contradict that. Again, we're never in the business of believing people. The question is always what evidence do we have that establishes disbelief? We don't have any contrary evidence. His account uh, is uncontradicted by hard facts. Well, it's, it's, he's in a situation where he has these things are now under a subpoena and he has 
conversations with people who they, they potentially could implicate, and then he takes this, this, uh, this action. So I guess the question is, is it more reasonable to think that he just would have said, oh, you know what, I just need to all of a sudden bleach bit this stuff without any direction at all. I just find that to be something that is, uh, that is difficult to square. Let me ask you this. Uh, in September, you sent a memo to your employees at the FBI uh, basically defending the way the uh, Bureau handled uh, this investigation. Why did you send that? It was about how we were doing transparency, because it was all kinds of business about whether we were trying to hide stuff by putting it out on a Friday. And I wanted to equip our workforce with transparency about how we were doing our productions to Congress so they can answer questions from their family and friends. Thank I want you. them to know we're conducting ourselves the way they would want us to. And you have, because you mentioned former agents and people in the community. I mean, this has provoked some controversy within, within the ranks of current and former agents. Not within the FBI. Again, it, who knows what people don't tell the director, but I, I, should have, I should have asked Mr. Gomert. If there are agents of the FBI who are concerned or confused about this, please contact me. We'll get you the transparency you need to see that your brothers and sisters did this the way you would want them to. All right, I, I'm out of time, but I will say just uh, when I was in the military, you had said no one would be prosecuted. I mean, maybe that was just for civilian, but I can tell you that people, if you had compromised top secret information, uh, there would have been a court martial in your future, and I yield back. Would the director care to respond to that? Uh, no, fine. It's a direct comparison to the finding of uh, yourself that as you test, as you stated in your news conference, that uh, no prosecutor would prosecute somebody under similar circumstances. I understood, Mr. DeSantis, to be expressing a personal opinion. I, I, I accept that at face value. I just haven't seen the cases that show me on the public record that that's.